the communion room. It's not a dining room, it's a communion room. It's one big table. If I'd known we were going to such a formal occasion, I, I would have put on their I'm uniforms. I'm surprised to learn that you're the chairman of the board of directors, your highness. I'd heard that the chairman was a member of the imperial family, but still. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Who would expect the infamous prodigal son to chair a committee at a prestigious academy like Thor's? I suppose it's not surprising they'd rather keep it hushed up, though. It wouldn't exactly be great for the school's image. That's surprisingly forthright coming from you. Is it really true, though? I mean, that you were the one responsible for establishing Class 7, Your Highness? Indeed, I was. You see, it's always been a tradition that a member of the Imperial family serves as chairman of the board. At first, I wore the title and name only, but I had a change of heart after my vacation in Liberal two years ago. You were in Liberal back then? That would put your visit during the incident that occurred there, correct? Right. All I've done since I returned to Erebonia has been inspired by my experience during the crisis in Liberal. As a result, fruitless though they may prove to be, I've set a number of plans in motion. One of which is to bring the winds of change to Thor's military academy. A gust of fresh air, if you will. Winds of change, huh? I can only assume you're referring to our class? Then the one who decided to throw both commoners and nobles into the same class was... Yes, the idea was mine. Although, the selected students also had to have a high aptitude with the Arcus units, too. I think I'm finally starting to understand the reasoning behind Class 7. <laughs> and why we're being sent all over Erebonia on these field studies. To show us firsthand and give us cause to consider the conflict between the two factions. That is the purpose behind our field studies. Is it not, Your Highness? That is one of the reasons, yes. However, my foremost intention was to show you that during your lives, you will encounter many obstacles and conflicts. Not just between factions, but between the capital and the provinces, tradition and technology, even between nations. In these turbulent times, I thought that this would provide the hands-on education today's promising youths need. We need up-and-comers who can think and act independently to face tomorrow's challenges head-on. That makes sense. Wow, that's quite a plan. I can't help but feel a little unsure whether we can live up to such high expectations. Hearing your explanation has, at the very least, cleared up many of the doubts I've had up to this point. Class 7 does seem like an ideal environment to expand one's outlook on life. I feel like going through everything we have so far has brought us closer to doing exactly that. Yep. <laughs> Marvelous. I'm so pleased to hear it. Just listening to you makes me feel even more certain that establishing Class 7 was the right decision. Especially since while the idea itself was mine, I have no real say in how the classes run day to day. Even so, I still hope to meet all of you at least once, if only to tell you all this. Thank you, Steve. That was when Alfin stepped in and offered to set up this little meeting. I see. <laughs> well, I could hardly refuse such a sincere request from my brother. But it also presented me a fine chance to finally meet Elise's beloved brother, as I've always wanted to. Your Highness. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to tell us all of this, Your Highness. I feel like now that I know, I want to live up to the promise you saw in Class 7. Like he didn't before? Thing is, am I right in assuming that Class 7 doesn't exist just to fulfill your progressive ideal? What are you... Oh? The board has its chairman, of course, but three directors besides. My older brother Rufus, Imperial Governor Carl Regnitz, and Irina Reinford of the Reinford Group. 
how she forget that part? Now that you mention it, they do seem to have certain expectations for us. You think? <laughs> Precisely. As I mentioned, I no longer have anything to do with how Class Seven is run. That authority lies with the directors. As you're keenly aware, Rufus and Governor Regnitz sit on opposite sides of the factional divide. And while Chairman Arena is mostly involved with Class 7's technology, like the Arcus, her intentions are a mystery to me. And it's those three who decide where you'll travel for your field studies. Is that right? When you put it that way, it does make it seem like some kind of bargaining is taking place behind the scenes. <laughs> It was one of the conditions they gave in exchange for allowing Class 7 to be established. I'll admit, I hesitated to allow it, but I decided to place my hopes in you. We believed then, as we still do, that one day, you all will be a great light that can push back the darkness of this country. <laughs> well, I suppose when I put it that way, it sounds positively heroic. But that's just me. Don't feel too pressured by it. Your students, first and foremost, reach out and grab that fragrant rose of school life. <laughs> Join a club. Eat cheap food with your friends at midnight. Fall in love. We live but once. Make your youth count. <laughs> you know, it's weird, but hearing you say that kind of takes a load off my mind. By the way... Just earlier, you said that we believed the Class 7 would be a great light. Is there someone else involved with Thors who shares your vision for our class, Your Highness? There is. Principal Van Dyke. I once attended Thors myself and studied under him. He gave my proposal to establish Class 7 his full backing. I see. He's been particularly considerate toward us ever since we arrived at the Academy. While he has no direct control over the running of the Academy, he does preside over the board meetings. And above all, he's the one who assembled an excellent team to give you first-rate training. An excellent team, you say? <laughs> I think we're all thinking of the same person. Are you referring to Instructor Sarah? <laughs> well, she's certainly one of them. Still... Coaxing her away from her former line of work certainly played a large part in giving Class 7 a great foundation. She is, after all, one of the strongest people in the Empire, and her experience makes her a natural field leader. Wait, what? <laughs> Instructor Sarah? One of the strongest people in Erebonia? Exactly what experience might you be referring to? <laughs> I've even heard rumors of her daring exploits myself. She was known as the Purple Lightning. Doesn't that sound exciting? <laughs> Wait. Purple Lightning? I knew it. If you two have heard of it, it must be a household name among martial artists. That's right. Though I've just heard it in passing. Ah, that young ace of the Erebonian Bracer Guild. And one of the Empire's most famous bracers. She has a history full of brave feats and dangerous deeds. She was even the youngest bracer to achieve A-rank status. Back then, she was known as the Purple Lightning. Now, you know her simply as your homeroom teacher. Oh my. That might explain a few things. <laughs> 